God has already placed on Catherine's heart to share. But Father, we just want to thank you for this morning, Lord. I want to thank you, Father, that you've already presented yourself with us in such a great way. Lord, I just pray that you continue to present yourself with us as Catherine brings her word to us this morning. Lord, give us open hearts. Give us soft hearts, Lord Jesus, to hear the words that you're speaking. And Father, I ask that for each one of us this morning, I've forgotten my reading glasses. I am at that age where I need my reading glasses. So um, if I lose my train of thought, give me a minute just to sort of. Okay. I've actually, okay. I've actually changed the beginning. They've changed the introduction to this because when I first thought I was bringing this word, which was a couple of weeks ago, and then there was the fire, and then things got mixed about, and the order got changed. Um, I was kind of going to go in one direction, but. Change, change the introduction. What I'm saying is still the same, but the intro is a little bit different. And um, as it happens, this morning we talked quite a lot about family, and Jez talked about the, the global reach of, of our faith. And one of the great things about being a Christian is that no matter how big or how small your local church is, you always are part of this global and eternal family. Yeah. Whenever Jeff and I travelled around the globe and lived in various countries, it was never very long before we found ourselves part of a family. And that was purely because of the church and because of, of the Lord. If I'd, if I'd not been a Christian, it, may, it probably would have been a lot harder for us to find friends and feel comfortable and be part of a family. And it's wonderful that um, this church here in Caffili has got connections all over the world. And all of the people from all over the world have, in fact, come to us as well. And this morning, um, I'm thinking particularly of the USA. We have very strong connections to the USA through quite a number of our people. Here's Katie over there, um, and obviously Annie and Rob's family are over there. And there's, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of very strong connection with America. And of course, this week coming, America celebrates Independence Day, yeah. and millions of people across that country and indeed Americans across the world, will be um, celebrating the life that they live under the American Constitution. And one of the foundations upon which the Constitution is built is the principle that God created humans to be free. Amen. In fact, and I'm sure Katie could, um, could quote this, but the Constitution actually says, we are endowed by, or they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, as in non-optional, completely, 100% guaranteed rights. The, among these are life, liberty, freedom, and the pursuit of happiness. So, God's people are created to be free. Amen. And that's something that the Lord has been speaking to me about a lot recently. And it's been quite a journey, actually, and I'm still on it. And everything that you hear come out of my mouth this morning is born very much from a heart of learning and from a heart of experience. And I'm not actually, I'm still a work in progress on this. So um, I'm going to, I want you to hold me to account if over the coming weeks and months you hear me say or do or see me do things that are in, con in, in contravention of what I'm saying this morning. Point it out, tell me. Catherine, come on, you're not, you're not doing it. Yeah. You're not living it. Come on. Back your ideas up. So, I'm, you know, you can hold me accountable, right? We are designed and destined to be free. Not the freedom that's physical. I'm not talking about the fact that we can do what we like, go where we please, travel wherever we want, vote whatever direction we want, pick up whatever book we want. I'm not talking about that kind of freedom. I'm talking about freedom of heart and mind and spirit. Freedom that brings joy and peace and isn't dictated by anything else going on around us. It's not dictated by our state of health or where we live, or who's on the throne. It's not dictated by any of that. It's a freedom that comes only from our relationship with God. 
And the text really for this morning is from John 8, 36. I'm sure you probably all know it, but it's worth jotting a little note down or if you want to turn to it, by all means do. John 8, 36. And this is Jesus speaking. So if the Son sets you free, Amen. you will be free indeed. Amen. End of. You will be free. Amen. And the secondary text then in Galatians 5, verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened by a yoke of slavery. Amen. Yeah, that's good. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Not might, not possibly, but has set us free. Amen. We will be free because Christ has set us free. So why? does Paul say that second little bit? So stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened by a yoke of slavery. Mm. He says that because we have this really nasty habit <laughs> of slapping cuffs on ourselves. Yeah. We have this horrible way of binding ourselves into not literal chains but metaphorical chains. We put, we, we drag these emotional balls and chains around with us we completely enslave ourselves in stuff that shouldn't be there negative destructive emotions and every and stuff that is completely contrary to the life that god's destined us to live i know i do sound familiar yeah yeah, yeah? yeah. i am so guilty of it and recently the lord has just started to say Enough. Yeah. Stop that. Mm -hmm. You've been quite, be quite direct. Mm -hmm. And there were three particular things that he's highlighted to me that um, are the key, almost the keys to the chains, to the prison doors. And so I just want to, I want to share these with you. I really believe that God wants me to share these with you this morning. And my prayer is that somewhere along the line these keys you'll you'll be able to pick up some of these keys and use them for yourselves amen yeah. so the first key that he um he gave to me was in the area of trust mm. now this all began back mm. in april when myself and my sister my brother-in-law my niece and my auntie went up to rigos and head to the valley there and we went and did the zip line the <laughs> phoenix zip line now if you can imagine, um, it's it's quite a scary thing, but at the same time, it was absolutely amazing. It was just fantastic. I had an absolutely brilliant time. I loved it. In fact, I loved it so much that I'm going again with Annie next week. <laughs> Me and Annie are going flying. Yes, the dream team. So the reason that there is a very clear reason, I think, in my mind as to why I enjoyed it so much. It was because I trusted the people that were instructing me and I trusted the process. Without question, I listened to everything that these people said to me that I needed to do and not do. When they fitted me with all the equipment, I had this, um, this, what's the word I'm looking for? So security that that yes, this stuff is the right stuff. This is stuff. This is going to hold me. This is all going to be great. And I didn't think about you know stuff that stuff that could have potentially upset me or worried me. I didn't think about it. I just thought right. I've been told what to do by people who sound like they know what they're talking about. I've got all this safety equipment on. Let's do it. And I threw myself literally off the side of the mountain, hanging by a wire, and I had the best time. And the biggest part about it was the freedom that I felt as I'm flying through the air. The freedom. The view was spectacular. It was quiet, it was peaceful, and there was nothing I could do about it. It was completely not dependent on anything I was doing. I was just trusting the equipment and the people, and I was free, I was so free. It was just incredible. And afterwards, me and my sister were looking back on a day and enjoying, the, you know, so 
enjoying recounting our memories of the day and God spoke to me and he said, why don't you trust me like that? Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Why don't you trust me like that? Mm-hmm. I, I had spent the day trusting the word of imperfect people who had created equipment and, you know, that these are, these are not geniuses. In fact, half the kids that were talking to me looked like they were on their Saturday job and they were doing 11, you know, they were young enough to be my own children. But I trusted them and God said, I created them. I'm the one who gave um, men the, the knowledge and the ability to create the equipment that you trusted so faithfully. I did all of that, so why on earth do you not trust me the same way? Who can tell me, and I'd be, I'd be happy to have them, someone shut up, Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. What does it say? Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> when you only always acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Amen, yeah. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Submit to him and he will make your path straight. When I was baptised at the age of eight, that was my baptismal that I was given and I think it was probably prophetic because I had turned into somebody who uh, totally goes in the opposite direction to that. I am one of those people who leans a lot on my own understanding. My human brain, as does everybody's, works on logic. We look at daily life, we look at our problems, I think about my plans and often all I see is what I can do about it and what I need to do yeah. um, and what I can and can't do about stuff. I pray for God's help and I pray for his intervention and his guidance but because I, I have this habit of attaching human characteristics to God yeah. so I spend my time thinking yeah God you know I've handed this over to you but what if you don't see me through? What if you don't get me the answer in time? What if like me what if, what if, what if. So I spend half my life coming up with a plan B, just in case God doesn't come through. I worry, I panic, I lose sleep, I don't enjoy life, I fear stuff. And that is not being free. That is not freedom. That is not living the life that God wants us to live. The thing is, God's power defies all law. It defies all natural forces, it defies all laws of physics, and the reason why it does that is because he created all of that, and he knows how to transcend it. Yeah, that's all right. Just think, I mentioned this a few weeks ago, when, um, when God's people were stood on the banks of the Red Sea with the Egyptians coming behind them. They were in a physical pickle. They was, they was like, what are we going to do about this? We've got this great big bank of water in front of us. We've got the Egyptians behind us. Ha! Help! What can we do? And God says, don't do anything. I've got this. Literally, stand still. Wait for me. I'm on it. And God defied logic, understanding. He defied the laws of physics. He parted the water and got those people to the other side. All they had to do was stand still and wait for him. When he called Peter up to the boat onto the water, that was defying logic, that defied physics, that defied every natural law. And the reason Peter was able to walk on that water was because he looked at Jesus, he looked straight into Jesus' eyes and focused just on what he was telling him. As soon as he sort of turned away, as soon as he started to think about what was going on around him, he began to sink. Yeah. But as soon as you fix your eyes back on the Lord, up you come and you start defying logic again. You start breaking through in areas that were otherwise completely impossible. Mm. It's all about trust. It is all about relinquishing everything you know, relinquishing everything you think, everything you think you know about yourself. And completely trusting God. And it's not an easy thing to do because, as I say, we are 
We are who we are, we think we're clever, we think we're intelligent, and we forget sometimes that God transcends it all. But I want to encourage you this morning. Freedom from worry and fear and anxiety comes with the key of trust. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Now, this second thing that God's talked to me about is kind of a toughie. Freedom comes when we die to ourselves. Yeah. 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 Very good. We talk a lot about dying to self, when, particularly when we're preparing to be baptised because we've got that physical action of going under the water, you die into your old life, and when you come back up again, you're a new creation and all that stuff. Um, but what does, what does dying to yourself actually mean? Is it just a one-time thing? Yeah. Yeah. Right not. I found this definition, we die to self, or sorry, when we die to self, it's by living more like Christ and less like ourselves. This means that we try to incorporate more Christ-like traits into our way of thinking and being. Literally, this means more of God and less of us. To be crucified with Christ is to allow our flesh to die and make room for the Holy Spirit within. On the cross, Jesus died for us. Thus, dying to ourselves in this way is to cast off sins or to let them die. Even though we live our lives in the flesh, satisfying basic human needs, what is more important is satisfying the spirit. Yeah. Yes. Great. Yeah. Colossians 2 verse 20, if you want to turn with me, we've got a few, um, we've got a few little bits. This is Paul speaking to the Church of Colossae. Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? Fair question. And then we go down to chapter 3, verse 1. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. And then down to verse 15, this is where the freedom comes in. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Now, that's pretty clear instructions, but how does that apply? How do we relate that to our day-to-day -day lives? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confess something to you now, and it's, this has been a really uncomfortable journey for me. But um, a lot of us are on various forms of social media. A lot of us are on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or TikTok or whatever. And there was some, there was a particular Facebook page that um, I would see, and the content of that Facebook page was it was it was by it was Christian content, but it would just wind me up. There was stuff on there that I would think, really. Because the people that were creating that content were living life a different way to me, not, not in a bad way, but they just they were just doing things differently to our, how I would do them and how I think we should we should do things. And it would just wind me up. And it would wind me up to the point where I'd be sitting there, judgmental, getting angry, getting really, really catty. <laughs> Really? How can they possibly? God, are you seeing this? Are you, are you seeing seriously? I mean, how can they possibly? And it got to the point where, in fact, my outrage became such that I would deliberately go to that page to see what was going to annoy me next. And you know, that's so bad because that is not Christ-like. That person doesn't know that I'm attacking them but i am it's making me bitter it's making me angry it's 
pushing me to the point almost of obsession. And that's really not healthy. I find, you know, even when I was when I was writing this yesterday, and I think I've sort of put in my notes, relate my story. It was this little part of me that actually wanted to go and have a look right then. <laughs> no, no, stop. Because I remember one day sitting there and going, God, why are you? Why do you learn this? Why are you allowing this? And God said, Why are you looking at it? <coughs> well, really? Why are you looking? Stop it. Stop it. Simple as. That need in myself, that desire in myself to go looking and go becoming uh, outraged and annoyed and bitchy and whatever else, God was saying, no, no, no. You stop that now, you put that to death. Yeah. Enough. It, I will deal with them. They, that is my issue between me and them. What's between me and you right now is that you need to stop this because this is doing nobody any good. Yeah. Least of all you. And you know, there are so many things that come into our lives and we don't think anything of them. But God's just saying, no, stop doubting yourself on that one. You need to put that to one side. I'll give you some examples. Maybe there's a television show that you like to watch, but that television show prompts responses in you that are not healthy, yeah, that are not godly, that take your take you into places in your heart and in your mind that you really shouldn't be going. Maybe there's a place that you go to and it just, you, you know you shouldn't be there. But you keep going because you think, I can handle it, it's fine, I've, I've got this. And you know that as soon as you walk in there, you're just going to you're just going to start behaving or, or speaking in a way that is not how God would want you to do. Maybe there are people that you interact with right now and God's saying, those people are not healthy for you. Pray for them by all means, but you need to step away. Yeah, There's so many little things that can just come in and cause more of us and less of God. It's hard. It really is hard, but God's saying right now that your virtual social media account, stop looking. Stop reading that. Stop going there. Give it up. Let it go. Because the truth of the matter is when God asks us to let go of something, he never leaves that void empty. He doesn't just, he doesn't just take something away from you and leave you to it. He takes that empty space now that has been freed up by you letting go of something and he fills it with something far, far greater. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you may remember a while ago, and I think it was, it was either Herb or Stu, I can't remember, one of the two, stood with Jez up here and took a handful of pennies and they tried to, tried to fill their hand with coppers. And Jez said, I've got a £20 note here, do you want that? But they couldn't take the £20 note because their hand was full of coppers. And God says, let go of the coppers, let go of the trash, let go of the stuff that isn't wor is worthless, and take hold of my £20 note. And that way you will know freedom. Because when you, when you do like I did, and you allow yourself to become obsessed and to become... Um, taken in by stuff that is just not godly, you bind yourself up. Yeah, yeah. I was binding myself up in anger and negativity. I was bullying. That's me. I was bullying somebody, they didn't know I was doing it, but that's what I was doing. That's so bad. I had become somebody that was not reflecting Christ. I was a prisoner to stuff that was so wrong. God says stop. Yeah. God says die to yourself. Every day, yeah. die to yourself. Yeah. Let it go. Yeah. And God will fill the void with something truly yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 Now the last thing 
that I want to share with you this morning. And this actually kind of ties in in, a, in no small way to the dying self. But it's something that we can really, really be massively enslaved by. And this thing is unforgiveness. Matthew 18, one of Jesus' parables. A king decides that he's going to call in all the debts in his kingdom. So everybody that owes him money needs to come right there and then and pay their money back. And one particular guy owed a vast sum of money to the king. I mean, millions. Ridiculous amounts of money. And there was no way this guy was going to be able to pay it. And so he goes before the king, and long story short, the king says, okay mate, I forgive you, I'm gonna let you go. The debt's wiped out, it's written off, on your way, go live your life. And that guy obviously was very happy, he was, you know, well, wonderful, I'm, I'm a free man, excellent. But then as he's walking away, he sees somebody who owes him You know, in our, in our money, he's just been let off millions and this guy owes him a tenner. Grabs him by the throat and says, come on mate, you need to give me my money back. Give me. Give me. You need to pay me now. And some of the servants of the king saw this going on and went back and told the king. And the king was furious. And instead of letting this guy go, he dragged him back in again and really admonished him. I forgave you a massive debt and you couldn't pay that on? You, you of all people, should have been the first one to let that debt go. And what happens, this guy ends up getting thrown into prison, tortured, in a right mess, until such times as he could eventually pay the debt back. Forgiving others is a fundamental principle of our faith. That's right. We might not end up in an actual physical prison, but when we fail to forgive, yeah. we bind ourselves in chains yeah. of misery and pain, the inability to move on, yeah. even into hatred. Yeah. I think I, I, I think there's a, there's a saying that talks about um, when you don't forgive somebody, it's like you drinking poison but expecting the other person to die. Yeah. yeah. See where I'm coming from? Right. Yeah. yeah. We are the ones who suffer. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's right. We lose our peace. We lose our joy. We lose our, abil our ability and desire to trust other people. Yeah. Everything that directly opposes the life that Jesus died to give us. Mm. And so the most part yeah we do our best to forgive i hope we do anyway 70 times 7 turning the other cheek blessing those who curse us i'm sure we all try as far as we possibly can to do that because we have been forgiven a tremendous debt by god and so yes yeah i think probably each and every one of us has at some point been in a situation where we've done our best to forgive and even if the other person doesn't know that you've forgiven them, because maybe they're no longer part of your lives, or maybe they um, didn't even realise that they wronged you, the act of forgiving them sets you free. Yeah. Yeah. And it allows God to heal and to move us in his plans and his purposes. If we don't forgive, we remain stored, mm -hmm. say, and imprisoned in so many again negative emotions and bad things but forgiving others that's only half the story what about forgiving yourself yeah. a couple of weeks ago i was having dinner with a lovely christian friend of mine and um we were talking about all sorts of things and we ended up chatting through some stuff that had happened through um, chapters of our lives during which we had both been really badly hurt. We'd both gone through some awful stuff 
we've been subjected to pain and well, I wouldn't say degradation, but that kind of knocking us down and it, it really left us in a dark place. And yeah, we've both handed those situations over to, the, over to God and we've moved into new chapters of our lives and we've forgiven the other people that were involved. And yeah, the Lord has forgiven us for whatever part we, have made, we maybe have played in all of that. But throughout that conversation, I both heard us saying stuff like, what on earth was I thinking? Why did I let that happen? Didn't I see that this was going to happen? Oh my goodness, what? Why, why, did, why did I let that? We constantly berated ourselves for our part in that situation. We'd be telling ourselves that we were fools. We were believing the rubbish that other people had said about us. Even if we, even though we'd forgiven them for saying it, we had still taken all that on board, and we were living in the in the reality of it. Two people living with feelings of inadequacy, of uselessness, that we're ugly, that we're only good enough for lives of mediocrity, feeling like we'd never be enough. We've allowed ourselves to be handcuffed by stuff that we hold against ourselves every day, dragging all that around like a great big black sack of rubbish. But there's hope. There's absolutely hope. Hebrews 12, the very first verse of Hebrews 12 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. In other words, lay aside, that is to put aside, cast away every weight yeah. and stop and think about this. What weight? Burdens, problems, hurts, bruises, pains, deaths, habits, sins, addictions, bad memories, everything that weighs you down. Yeah. All the stuff that causes sadness, depression, bad dreams, lack of sleep, fear for the future, everything. Lay it down. Yeah. Lay it to one side. Give yourself a break. Yeah. Stop it. We don't have to bear anything alone because he bore it all for us. Here's a couple of scriptures for you. Psalm 55, 22 says, Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Isaiah 46, verse 4. Even to your old age or when your hair turns grey, I am he who will sustain you. Yeah. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will will rescue you. Peter 1 verse chapter 5. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. Amy shared with us back before Christmas this particular verse. Love your neighbour as yourself. Bottom line is, if you can forgive other people, you can forgive you. It's that simple. Yeah. I nearly done. That's gone a bit quicker than I expected. Okay. Kes, can you come back up? I believe that God wants to say this to you, all of you. to give you an abundant life of freedom full of peace and joy when I cried out it is finished I was saying that nothing more needed to be done my sacrifice was enough it was enough to forgive every sin that you have ever committed or will ever commit it was enough 
to relieve you of every burden you've been carrying or will ever try to carry. It was enough to heal you in body and mind. It was enough to supply every need that you will ever have. To give you power and strength to withstand anything that life will throw at you. Nothing you can do or say will ever devalue or nullify what I have done for you. I will never hold your past against you. I will never berate you for your weaknesses or your failings. I will never reject you. I will never tell you you aren't good enough. And because of all this, you have no right to call yourself anything other than a child of God, a joint heir with Christ, loved unconditionally, totally forgiven, eternally secure, and utterly free. We're going to sing a little song to finish. But I've given you quite a lot to unpack there. I've said it's been quite a short one, but I've given you quite a lot to unpack there. And my prayer for all of us is that from today, we can begin to experience greater freedom than we've ever known before. I pray that some of you somehow will have been able to grasp hold of these keys and can start to unlock your lives with God's help. Because the bottom line, who the sun sets free, is free indeed.